it's time to take on minecraft's most dangerous farm now i spoke to you guys about this before but we're going to be rebuilding our wither skeleton farm from the ground up but we've got some things to do first and one of those things is i need to destroy everything inside this entire perimeter and that includes getting rid of all the slabs on the ground and the lava now a little bit about the actual farm itself is that it does use two crossroads here as you guys can see behind me all of the wither skeletons are attracted to the piglins there are two layers there are a bunch of wither roses but we can make this far more efficient by getting rid of all the lava now it doesn't look like a whole lot of lava underneath me but i can assure you there's about another 27 layers of lava and netherrack underneath me so it's going to require a ton of work so if you guys haven't done so already please leave a like on the video to help my channel out and consider subscribing if you guys want to see some more now before we get started we need to get into a little bit of the stuff that we need to do in order to make this place safe and i'll even explain to you guys exactly why the wither skeleton farm is the most dangerous farm to take on in hardcore minecraft now we all know that the one of the most important things to do is to set up beacons throughout our infrastructure and it looks like i didn't grab enough obsidian so i'm gonna have to get some of that but this should be enough to get started now to get into what makes the wither skeleton farm so dangerous and it's not what you think so what makes the wither skeleton farm so notoriously dangerous is not only because it's in the most dangerous dimension of all the nether but the lower in elevation that we get the more and more frequent the spawns will become now this isn't going to be an easy task by any means but i'm totally up for the challenge and i hope you guys are all here to support me but let's get into a little bit of the how are we going to get rid of the lava and the method that i've chosen moving forward scaffolds now some of you guys may have already heard about this method but oddly enough scaffolds can remove lava they're not going to burn in the lava but they are flammable so we'll have to watch out for gas anyways by taking our scaffolds you'll see that we can get rid of a layer at a time now this is going to take quite some time but we can slowly remove all the lava as we go so i think this will turn out to be an incredibly nice time lapse as we slowly get rid of the lava layer per layer now this is a really good example of how much lava like how deep the lava can basically be inside some of these caverns which means that it looks like it's going to be about seven or eight layers thick of lava pretty much throughout this entire area that took me about five minutes to do the entire perimeter well Well, it's dawned on me. We definitely don't have enough scaffolds to finish this job. Time to go get some more. And right about now, I'm very thankful that I have a factory where we can go quickly grab some bamboo. I've already got a bunch of string here, so we'll be able to make a bunch more scaffolds to proceed with our build. And this should be good enough for scaffolds. I got a few boxes, so we'll see how much more of a dent we can make here. Well, we went ahead and made a little bit more of a dent here. There is a plus side to using the scaffolds mobs no longer can spawn on top of scaffolds which is definitely helping out but let's just say that little bit of basalt right there there's a lot of magma cubes spawning in which where it stands right now i'm at 14,246 magma cubes and i'm interested to see how high this number gets by the end of this project taking a bit of a break from a little bit of the scaffolding to collect a little bit of sand so here's hoping that there's enough sand here for me to collect i'm thinking six boxes will be a good start so i can make some walls inside of the perimeter Well, that brings us one step closer to hitting a million with our sand mind. Time to go place this out in the nether and create some cool lines so I can drain some lava faster. Have I mentioned that I absolutely despise magma cubes? Because I would like to reiterate that. Anyways, this sand wall right here has done wonders. I would like to kind of spread that all the way over across here. Maybe get rid of some of the basalt behind me to mitigate the amount of spawns, especially gas. But... I will say I'm dying out here because this area right here is an absolute tiny bit of this perimeter. Now 
Now, I've been doing some thinking and I come to the conclusion that I think that sand actually might be the fastest way to get this done over scaffolds. Originally, I didn't want to use sand because I know soul sand valleys can be a huge pain in the neck, but well, if you look, I'm in the nether waste over here. It's pretty clear over here. I'm in the basalt delta. I don't know if I have a whole lot of soul sand valley, maybe all the way over here, which maybe we'll use flying machines or something like that. And I think it pretty much goes all the way over here. So yeah, sand probably not going to work for this whole area, but this is a very big area that I think flying machines would really work. If I had like some sort of lava flying machine going all the way across here that could remove the lava, just some food for thought because while I'm out here digging out all of these slabs, I've got quite a bit of time to think about things. These are not haste mineable. So I'm going to be here for quite some time just digging out the slabs themselves, but also something to show you guys. So it may look like we've getting a lot of things done, which we are. Mind you, this has taken me about five or six hours of work right here. Um, if not more, I haven't really been keeping track. Look at the amount of magma cubes in here, which really slow me down. But I did dig down a little bit of a section all the way down to bedrock to kind of give you guys a sense of the size of this place. Bedrock's going to start at Y5, which means I have all of these other additional layers to go. So with that being said, I think it's very safe to say that Basalt will most certainly be hitting 1 million. If not, I'd be extremely surprised. Who knows what will happen to the Netherrack? Honestly, I think we'll certainly be hitting 3 million for that. And then Blackstone itself, I'm going to guesstimate, probably going to bring that up to about 300k or so. If you, if you guys are even interested in the stats. Who am I kidding? Of course you guys are interested in the stats. Anyways, I've killed well over a thousand magma cubes since I've started this little bit of a section over here. So yeah, slowly losing my mind. Wow. Wow. Damn. That's all I gotta say. Anyways, getting rid of all those slabs over there was an absolute pain in the neck. Uh, but I did it. Now I gotta get rid of all the basalt until I basically make it up to there. And then I'm gonna start filling the rest over there in with more sand. But... I might go with flying machines, but with that being said, there are still some slabs over here. And if you ever wondered why you do things in Minecraft in the past, this is one of them. Why did I do that? Oh, where's that coming from? Oh, love my life. Anyways, this is, this is my life now. Did I just break that? Oh no. Let's get back into digging. And I gotta replace this stupid sand wall over here because some jerk face decided to break it. Stupid gas. Anyways, look at this magma army. I'm having a great time. You know what digging in the basalt belt uh, kind of feels like to me right now? I feel like I'm Pac-Man trying to avoid the little aliens around here. And I'm just kind of digging around the magma cues because there's no going through that. They just overwhelm you and then they punch you around like stupid stupid looking slime thingies yeah i'm in a hole check it out so best way to do this that i think honestly is to do one chunk at a time so if i do f3g we're going basically all the way down the chunk borders it kind of mitigates the amount of magma cubes that spawn in these guys are all spawned in here right now either they jump down i also flew away to unload my inventory but look at it we're all the way down to bedrock over here in this small section and you'll see that we have tons of debris in here that's like three five seven another two over there so i don't know we could be flipping rich by the end of this project who knows get back to digging though you know it's occurred to me as i keep digging this out i can keep thinking to myself it'd probably be really really smart to get ahead of it now but start slabbing the entirety of the bottom of this area i know i'm not gonna floss the bedrock because there's really no point of that we will be losing an entire block so very, pretty much our floor for gotham city will be one block higher which will be at like what y6 basically and i need to start getting rid of some of this ancient debris here because i can't leave it floating because gas will be able to spawn there. So I'm going to guesstimate since I did it for the ceiling, I'm going to need about 80,000 blackstone slabs. So let's get ahead and start doing that now. 16 ancient debris. Not bad. 
now that looks incredibly clean and we shouldn't have to worry about a bunch of gas and a bunch of magma cubes basically spawning in this whole area i did kind of run really really low on the blackstone slabs but i'm hoping i can make all the blackstone back if i collect all the blackstone within the perimeter that i can get in the meantime with f3 and g i'm going to showcase where the chunk borders are and i'm pretty much going to go along the chunk borders and slowly start digging things out as we go like usual There's one thing in this world that i'm really happy that i have going into this build it is a xp farm because i am flying through pickaxes right now but not too bad not too shabby we're making a massive massive dent but let's head on over towards our xp farm so we're gonna go repair up our tools which honestly has me wondering what is your guys's preferred way to mend all your tools do you guys like to use a guardian farm do you use an enderman farm raid farm perhaps let me know in the comments section below And just like that, we have all of our pickaxes repaired. That only took me two TNT to fully repair up. How many picks was that? Uh, about six pickaxes and my shovel. So I would say that's pretty decent. And obviously with a dig this big, we're going to need to be able to repair our pickaxes as fast as possible because I've only made a little bit of a micro sliver of a dent inside this entire perimeter. So let's get back to it well i never want to see scaffolds again i just got rid of so much lava there and i've been running through picks insanely fast and i'm kind of feeling like i want to blow something up now i may have a little bit of tnt left over from ancient debris mining earlier this will probably do and as we all know this build is going through a little bit of a metamorphosis with tnt so i'm gonna blow up the main wither skeleton farm or at least try to we'll see how far we can get with this much tnt before we start laying down all the tnt there's actually quite a few beacons in here i should probably collect up first you know being a hot commodity and all and like i said the obsidian will be placed on the platforms here that way i don't lose exactly where the platforms are supposed to go because of bounding boxes and such and because i don't use limatica or mini hut or anything like that those bounding boxes are going to become extremely difficult in order for me to find the kill chamber is obviously behind that wall so i'm gonna go ahead and just turn that way down i don't want to turn it completely off because i also want to see if i'm actually getting attacked or anything crazy like that but underneath these carpets is a bunch of ender chests in which i think i want to salvage and to save my frog armor stand buddy down there but you can never have too many ender chests now i have over two stacks which is a pretty big plus and my 12 beacons that obviously needed to be salvaged Speaking about salvation, there are some items in here that I'm going to need to obviously keep. These wither skulls definitely being one. If I blow these things up, I'm literally going to cry because I have quite a few of them in here. Now, it's not every day that you have to run back to your storage room to grab more shulker boxes because you ran out of shulker boxes to put all your wither skulls. I'll tell you that. Bruh. And just to put it into perspective a little bit, I have killed over 339,000 wither skellies and 2,357 withers. So do with that information as you will. Gotta love having stats to back up everything that you've done in your hardcore world, huh? And have I mentioned that I've been opening up the corridors of the hub? 
making things a hell of a lot more safe to fly around here so i have each and every single one of these corridors now fully open got rid of all the skulk so i can fly freely throughout the hub but there's some massive additional changes that will be happening to this whole area so yeah there's also that now with all the resources i could possibly gather outside i should probably start getting rid of the spawning platforms that way when i'm blowing up this entire area the wither skeletons can't spawn so let's do that now well now i got everything tucked away out of the way just in case we have any straggling tnt blow up where i had all of my boxes and stuff so what? now we can start laying down the tnt but these guys i'm gonna have to be very weary of ah uh, yep well i'm gonna go out on a limb and say that if i needed a blaze farm right now this would be a great way or a great time to start at least because holy smokes wow well wow i guess you could say things are really heating up in there huh well needless to say i'm gonna need to make a trip on over to the witch farm because i'm gonna need a heck of a lot more fire resistance and before you ask yes I fully regret getting rid of the platform. Should have just left it there, set up the TNT grid up above, and then blew everything up. But you live and you learn, right? So I guess it's a really good time for me to tell you guys that we do have an auto brewer here designed by Impulse, which is amazing. So I'm just going to kind of load up on as many of these things as I possibly can. This should get me by. Right? I'm gonna go out on a limb and say that that definitely works got a little bit of a tnt grid behind me anyways i don't have enough tnt to actually fill up the grid so what i'm gonna have to do is we're gonna have to go farm up a bunch of sand to make a bunch of tnt but i think that's all the time that we're gonna have for today i think we got an absolute mega ton of lava drained so much basalt let's go over our stats real quick so we managed to get our basalt in the upwards of 811,000 with blackstone only going up about 20,000 give or take magma cubes getting upwards to 21,861 scaffolds upwards to 51,627 which is obviously accompanied by our sand which is 154,000 which you would think would be a lot more to be honest but that's where we ended up but I hope you guys all enjoyed today's episode. If you guys liked the video, please leave a like. If you want to subscribe for more content, consider subscribing. And in the next episode, we're blowing stuff up.